order of business is always public input. Uh, anything that uh, somebody has that's not on the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on to our student report. Tonight we have uh, Carolyn uh, Bierman. <laughs> Uh, so for academic matters, midterms we just came to an end of the high school. Uh, so this week we'll be getting back to our grade next Thursday. So because we just ended, the third quarter has just started. And course selections will be this week and next week. So um, guidance counselors will be going into individual classes and talking to the juniors, sophomores, and the freshmen about what the courses for them to do. Um, seniors will get back to the second position in college. Um, the SAT is a place we have that maybe Junior students to go and the next one will be in March. Uh, for finance, John has in March and uh, our, our um, <coughs> they have to be the first in time during the time to be able to go into that at the bottom of the time. Uh, and we're seeing Kevin on the team. We are still so basketball in the H4 and the next game is home tomorrow versus Montana. Boys basketball is 9-1 and the next game is going to be in tomorrow. For boys and girls, uh, track teams won the state girls uh, championship, and so this is the third year in the row for the boys. So it would be the only thing that the shuttle hurdle team on the boys' side actually qualified the national, so they'll be three years in the next year in March. And the boys' hockey team is also undefeated, and they uh, show up the most recent game in time, so the first time that they haven't won the game. Um, so our most recent one is a scientist, there's a lot of scientists from UMass Lowell, and the next one is at Reena. In our career speaking series, um, a hospitality um, hotel manager from the Marriott Hotel will be speaking to those interested in career in hospitality, and that will be taking place on the 26th, I believe. Uh, Mr. and our just signed up has begun at our school, so um, Stuco is sponsoring a graphic design competition to create a new logo for this competition. And there's going to be on the spot acceptance day on January 24th, and a representative from the middle school community will be visiting. And for my student work sample, I chose a document-based question essay that we've been doing in AP U.S. history. And so recently we've been trying to simulate the AP exam environment, so we've been having different essays in different time constraints that we have to complete these essays in. This is our first document-based question, and we talked a lot about the different things that the AP examiners will be looking for, like contextualization and synthesis and things like that. And so this is our first practice for that. So. So on uh, Sunday, the Boston Globe had a big story on the, the track teams, and I think the headline was North Reading Track Rules. It was, uh, it was great. The, um, the track athletes and the track coaches have just done a tremendous job at the school. And uh, are, are you on the track team? I'm actually not for the winter. Oh, just running this, just running the spring? Yeah. It's too cold for you to get inside. <laughs> I, I used to do winter, but I took a break this season. I also wanted to mention the, uh, the hockey team they dropped out this week for some reason. They were the only Division II team in the Globe's top 20 last week. And Hockey Night in Boston, which is uh, ranks all schools in Eastern Massachusetts, the new, uh, North Reading is the number two team in Division II uh, for Hockey Night in Boston. One other thing I wanted to um, just raise with the middle school, they have their, um, their play next week, uh, next weekend. Uh, Alice in Wonderland is next Friday and Saturday. And you can get tickets online. I think if you go to the Hornet, Productions website or Friends of Hornet Productions, you can get the tickets online. I just got mine today for Friday night, so, um, and the middle school does a great job. So, I know you're not in middle school, so you can have that. But I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> if you haven't been to a play at the Blue Plumbing Art Center, um, I strongly recommend you go and just get the benefit of not only seeing the production of great acting and the singing, but all of the, uh, the lighting and the sets, uh, it's, a, it's a great thing. So I hope everybody gets a chance to go over and support the uh, middle school drama club. Uh, the high school's already had their, their first play this year. But it's a, it's a great, great thing. The, the performances have all changed. They, they've gone from the what used to be like the high school kind of performance is now done by the middle school. And the high school performance is a lot like professional. So it's, it's kind of a quantum leap that they're doing. Facilities. Mr. Chair, one other thing, this is slightly um, away from Durland, but just for a second while we have all the parents here and because before they leave and they have to take their children home, I just want to ask all of you to be vigilant when it comes to state funding of education. The governor um, made a big deal this weekend about his historic, uh, his historic budget for education, which at the most will give us $20 more per pupil 
uh, next year, which is less than we got this year. So that's how historic it is. Um, please, please, please um, stay in contact with Brad Jones and Bruce Tarr and with the State House. Um, write letters, make phone calls. We need more money to run the schools, not only in this town, but in every town in the state. And the state um, and the federal government do not provide the funds we need. Which is why, one of the reasons, in addition to the beautiful new high school and middle school, that North Reading has a pretty high tax rate because we just don't get the support. So I just ask that you pay attention to that. I think the governor's budget will be announced, I think it's this Wednesday. Um, usually there are changes, there are always changes when it goes through the House and the Senate. But I just ask that you watch that and um, do all you can to help us get more funds to, to run our schools. And as of right now, without being an alarmist, but it's public knowledge, the, uh, you're looking at a potential million dollar deficit in that FY18 budget as we speak right now. So we, we have, that's the level services budget. So between now and uh, June town meeting, we have to figure a way to close that gap. So I think, um, listen to what Mel's saying and we need all the support that we can get. And when Mel says <coughs> we need more money, we'd like to have that come from the state level, not from not from the <laughs> right. Well, it's kind of coming from them anyway, but it, it, right, no. it's come from the local level. But you're going to give it up to the state yeah. no matter what. It's nice to get a little bit of it back. Are there any uh, further comments? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take our agenda out of order a little bit. And we'll I normally, by the way, don't bang the gavel quite that hard. I'm not running for re-election. <laughs> he doesn't care what he does. No. We to Close eye on him. <laughs> so we're, we're going to go on to new business uh, and the presentation of the bachelor school faculty. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the school committee uh, to the annual visit to the LD Bachelor School. I appreciate you know, the work that it takes to go and set up somewhere else and get the video set up. Um, we'll get to see a little bit about what our school is up to this school year. Um, this evening, one of the things that we wanted to bring, um, it's funny you talk about how the production value has come up, and I think this will be a good um, lead in to understand that as the music teachers, not only Miss Larson here at the bachelor school, but I know that music teachers at the other elementary schools are providing more and more opportunities for students to experience music um, beyond the classroom through performance. Um, and so Miss Larson wanted to bring together some kids who were available to take time out of their busy schedules, away from their homework, some committed parents who got you here to support you. And they're gonna share you. So can we give a nice round of applause for Miss Larson? Three short songs for you. Uh, we have uh, some members from the Bachelor Chorus. We have our largest chorus this year, 75 students, uh, but we have about 30 here today. Um, and the fourth graders are going to start out with some ukulele, which we've been working on in general music class. Um, and this first song is a spiritual called Yonder Come Day. Let's make sure I have my notes. We're going to sing first. Yonder Come I want to hear you go. Yonder come day, day is breaking. Yonder come day, on my soul. Yonder come day, day is breaking. Sun is rising in my soul. The trees are green and the air is sweet. The good earth sings underneath my feet. I point my feet down freedom line, walking that road I'm feeling fine. Yonder, 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 sun is rising in my soul. Yonder.
So first, baseline over here. Quickly zip those up. Yeah. Yeah. For my first. Testing, testing, testing. Uh, so this next song is a Liberian folk song called Take Time in Life. Um, and they're, they're singing in three-part a cappella, which is actually very impressive for elementary schoolers. Um, and this song uh, features a lot of our soloists here. As I was passing by, my mother called to me, and she said to me, you better take time in life. 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 Cause you've got far away to go. You better take time in life. You better take time in life. Cause you got far away to go. Passing by, called to me, said to me, take time in life. As I was passing by, my, my brother called to me, and she and he said to me, Better take time in life. You better take time in life. You better take time in life. You better take time in life. Cause you've got far away. It's okay. <laughs> Passing by. You better take time in life, better take time in life, cause you got far away to go. As I was passing by, my mother called to me, and she said to me, Ago, which, is, <laughs> which is why we're a little giggling. <laughs> um, can we switch for one candle? We have one more for you. So if we're singing part two, make sure you're on this side. Part one, make sure you're on this side. Okay. 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 First starts with the solos, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
getting your kids here, and this is about what, a quarter of our, our chorus, so um, it was pretty amazing to see them at the winter concert. I was really proud of them. Um, and I, I also want to really thank the Batchelder uh, Parents Organization for buying us those ukuleles two years ago. They've been such a wonderful asset to my curriculum, and uh, we, love, we love them. So <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Okay, we're going to sit until um, the fourth grade speakers are, are off. Yeah. Uh, boys and girls, excellent jump. I'll tell you, I've been to all the concerts, and that was like going to uh, a jazz house. You, know, you get so close, and you get to hear their voices so well. It was excellent. Thank you. Sorry, I have a question. Um, the ukulele lessons, are they after school? Are they during the day? No, the ukulele. Uh, yeah, so we do that in general music, so when they come to music twice a week, we do a mixture of a lot of things, uh, you know, world music, ukulele, recorder, um, keyboards in fifth grade, so lots of singing. I don't want to show my pregnancy, but I prefer the ukulele over the recorder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe some of the parents do too, but <laughs> we have very good recorder players here at LD Batchelders. <laughs> um, I think one of the greatest stress that we have when you come here every year is to decide what to share with you. And we try to get all over the um, curriculum with the performing arts, the fine arts, but then we also like to take time to get you up to speed on what some of the academics in the curriculum is. So today I have uh, Miss Johnson and Miss Hewitt, fourth grade classroom teachers, and Miss Lindsay, a digital learning specialist. We're going to share some of the things that we've been working on in fourth grade. Hi, I'm Laura Johnson, fourth grade teacher um, here at the Batch. I'm one of four fourth grade teachers, and as I said, I'm here with Mrs. Hewitt, one of my teammates. And the fourth graders tonight, I'm going to share with you a little bit about um, how we integrate technology into our classroom and how we use it to enhance our curriculum. In Ms. Johnson's fourth grade science class, we studied matter and energy. Did you know matter is never created or destroyed? It is um, only transferred from one kind to another. After studying different forms of energy, we made an ebook um, using the Book Creator app on the iPads. First, with a partner, we explored our school building to find different kinds of energy systems. Once we decided on a system, we took a picture of it and imported it into our ebook. Next, we typed in what we had learned and observed about the system. We identified the types of energy being used and the different energy transfers that take place. Because we were using the iPads, they were, we were then able to add narration to our ebook. It was fun hearing our voices. Here's a part of our energy system. In science, we are learning about energy systems. Here are a few examples. I hope you learn more about energy systems from our movie. This computer is a current electrical system. This energy <coughs> system was found in Mrs. Johnson's fourth grade class on the fourth floor. The current electricity is transferred and turned into heat, light, energy, and when keys are typed, it is mechanical energy. This is Duncan G. And I'm Dawson Duffley. This is an energy system. It is an electric staple up. It is located in the computer lab office on the third floor. It is plugged in. So it transfers current electricity to a mechanical, then sound energy when it's being used. This is an energy system. It is a copying machine. It is located on the fourth floor in the copying room. The printer uses current electricity when it is plugged in. When the printer prints paper, it transfers current electricity to heat energy, light energy, sound energy, and mechanical energy. This story is by Tyler and Mary and Morgan Davis. So I teach science twice with uh, my classroom and Mrs. Hewitt's classroom. We switched for science and social studies. So they each had a partner and made a slide in both classes and then got to present it and then we got to email at home also so parents could see their hard work. 
This year, the North Reading Elementary Schools began a new math program called Eureka. In connection with the curriculum, we work on a digital math program called CERN. CERN aligns with our grade level math units or modules. It begins a module with an instructional video called Math Chat. The videos introduce new, concept, um, new concepts and model skills we are about to learn. Then, it allows us to practice the skills and move at our own pace, giving us immediate feedback on our answers and problem solving. There are times when we do work in a corresponding notebook, and it also quizzes us on our back fluency. We can use Zern as a whole class or in small stations during our math block. We use it on the Chromebook in our classrooms. Here's what a typical Zern lesson looks like. So each student logs in, they have their own username and password. And again, some of us, we can, you can do it the whole class at one time, or do small math stations uh, while you're working in small groups. Okay. And each student also has their own set of um, headphones now in class so that they can listen to the video as well. Did you ever wonder what happens to the area and perimeter of a rectangle if we make it twice as long? What about three times as long? What about two times as long and three times as wide? Today we're going to explore the relationship between area and perimeter and see if we can discover any patterns. Alright, so that's a sample of what the math chat looks like in the beginning. And then students jump on and work with their lessons. Uh, so Vanessa here. Uh, so Vanessa here is just going to show you where she is. Uh, one great thing about this program is the teachers can go in and set what module the student is working at, and it can be differentiated. So if some students didn't get everything in Module 1, you can keep them on Module 1 until they keep practicing. And um, go ahead, Vanessa, go. she'll just go in and show you how she does that. Gives you the immediate feedback here. paper here. So two times length plus width, right? And then it just continues um, along with the lesson. And our, um, the questions get harder as they go. And then there's also a section that follows the sprints in the Eureka program, which quizzes them on fact, fact fluency and its time. And we can check on as teachers to see how long they're spending on each problem and what the success rate is. Okay. Right. Right. And can my students who just pull come on up here real quick? I just want to give you all right, so this is Carly Hudson who spoke earlier, Alana Hannon, Ross and Duffley, and Nessa Steinmeier. As uh, Sean mentioned, my name is Chris Lindsay. I'm one of the dark digital learning specialists, and I focus on the um, introduction to programming and robotics grant in each elementary school. And um, last year, if you were here, you hopefully remember we had the first graders on the floor with the B-Bots, and that's how we introduced the youngest students to programming and robotics. Um, and then once they have this foundation, the second and third graders use an iPad app called Scratch Junior uh, that was developed by MIT faculty, and we showed that last year as well with the um, students made a Scratch Junior project programming characters to um, share what they learned about planets. And so now we thought it'd be neat to show what, now that they've learned that, what the fourth graders are doing with, it's actually a full version of Scratch that is on the computer. So they're getting to see all these different devices and learn about them. Um, 
and um, so Rafi is going to share how fourth graders are building on the programming skills they develop. Um, and we want you to just sort of see all the programming that went into it. So right from here, you can see all that he's done, and he's going to do his info. This fall, a digital learning time was spent creating a project that was connected to our social studies curriculum. We brought a state poster project into the 21st century by using the Scratch programming software to share what we learned about one of the states. We used the library databases and books to research our assigned state during digital learning and social studies time. We then learned how to program in Scratch and use the blocks in this program to have characters or sprites move and share information about the state. As you will see, a lot of programming went into this project. Here is my Scratch project about the state of Kentucky. This is the programming for the first sprite. And then this is the programming for the second sprite that he's going to talk to. And then this is the programming for the last sprite. Hello. I am Matt Bevan, the state governor of Kentucky, or the Bluegrass State. Kentucky is located in the southeast region of the United States. Frankfurt is the capital city of Kentucky, but is not big at all compared to its other cities like Louisville. Kentucky borders Indiana and Ohio to the north, Tennessee to the south, Virginia and West Virginia to the east, and Missouri and Illinois to the west. Hi, Matt. Hi. Welcome to the beautiful Appalachian Plateaus overlooking the Appalachian Mountains. Wow, it's beautiful. Can you tell me more about it? Well, the Appalachian Mountains range is famous and stretches across most of the southeast. It is one of the most beautiful sites in all of Kentucky. No doubt about that. I have to leave for I have much to show and not much time. Good to meet you. Goodbye. Oh wow, that was gorgeous. <laughs> Hi, Matt. It is I, Daniel Booney. How are you? Hi, Daniel. Tell the people where we are. <coughs> this is the trail that I used to lead settlers into Kentucky. This is now a historic and national park of the United States. It is called the Cumberland Gap. It is beautiful. How long did you spend traveling this trail? Well, it took about 25 years since Thomas Walker first entered the trail until I founded Boonesboro. Well, thank you for your time, Daniel, but I must leave. Goodbye, Daniel. This is the Kentucky Derby. It is held once every year here in Kentucky. The Kentucky Derby is the most famous horse race in the world and host riders from all over the world. The Derby attracts many people and has been held for more than 50 years. If you are looking for something to do in Kentucky, definitely take the Kentucky Derby into consideration. Well, I hope you liked Kentucky, and until next time, I am Matt Bevan.
wrapping. Did a fabulous job. And then some social studies to do as well. Did a fabulous job. So let's wrap it over. Again, I'd like to thank the teachers and the students for their time. I, before I discharge them and let them go, did anybody have any questions for any of the teachers and the students? All of the children were very composed. Yeah, you know, I remember being that, wasn't that long ago, but being young like them, my voice would quiver. And they had such good control. Their voices were beautiful, great posture, eye contact. It was very impressive. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. in this state that don't have the music program that we have in our school system. Music and art, too. Exactly, we did and art, too. Right. We did an art. And, and we, we need to continue to invest in those areas so we have fully educated, multi-dimensional students that graduate from our school system. The, the multi-dimensional is part of the 21st century skill set. Correct. Because we don't know what the, the skills are going to be needed. I don't, don't know what the jobs are 10 years or 15 years from now, but I do know what the skill sets are, That's right. and they're all, always the same. I think we've only started to reach a recover from those guys. Yes. We really do. Even the, the band is just starting to get bigger yeah. at the high school. Nine years. It's, 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 it
it has. I mean, the band yeah. was down to about like nine or ten people. Yeah. And students at one point, I think over a couple of years, we probably even, I don't yeah, know if we, had, we even had a band. It was very we small. Yeah, it's, it's, we're just, we just recently getting started back. to rebound the last couple of years. Right. You're right. So continuing on the new business, I'm going to ask this lead of my host. I hope I did that way. <laughs> From the Drug Free Communities Grant Project. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, let me just take away the podium just for way of introduction. So you might recall we had Amy Leckowitz present to you um, when the community had received that very sizable grant, directly the community's grant. So one of the one of the positive byproducts of that is that Leah is um, now the person that has been hired by the town. I had the good fortune of sitting on the interview committee that ultimately selected um, Leah, and she has done a very nice job in a short period of time integrating herself into the community. So she's here tonight to, um, to seek the uh, permission of the committee to administer um, surveys to students at our middle school and high school, copies of which are in your packet. Um, this is a, Leah, you correct me if I'm wrong, this is a requirement of the grant it that we obtain some baseline data, and I'll, I'll turn it over to you to speak to the committee more sure. about um, the needs and, and how you plan to approach this. Yes. Okay. And I think that, I don't know if that's working. <coughs> um, but again, I'm Leah, I'm the project coordinator for the Drug for Communities um, grant that we just received. So, and just a quick brief overview of me. I have a master's of social work and a licensed certified social worker. Um, I recently did a place in the Beverly Hospital. I worked with a range of different clients and clientele, families, um, a lot of sick people, different ranges of you know what they're going through, what they need. And then I also did a place in an elementary school, so I worked with grades K through five, all the range of different things: social skills, uh, behavior modification, gen ed, um, planning, any kind of education plans, parenting um, skills. So I did, I've done a few different things, but this main. The purpose of this grant is for substance use prevention of youth and we're trying to collect data just to see exactly where that is, you know, where we need to work on prevention and then how to implement those things. And we're hoping to do grades 6 through 12 and it would be a survey, which I believe you guys have copies of. Um, so it's pretty much about use um, and then also how they how they feel about the use, how they think their parents feel about any kind of drug use, and it's specific to what kind of drugs you're using, where you're getting this from, where you use, when you use. So there are a lot of different questions, and what you have in front of you is the exact survey that we would be conducting, we'd be giving out, and we're hoping to do um, a, a, between a day or two, just how it works out, what works out. I've met with both principals, all the principals, um, middle school and high school, so we're thinking maybe a power ball between, maybe a whole day or maybe one or two days. Um, we're going to do pen, pencil, I mean, paper and pencil for the kids, and then we're hoping to send the emails, I'm sorry, the surveys via email to the parents. It would be through, we'd send them a link and they just click on it and then we give them access to it and they will get in and do it. So that's what we're hoping for and um, we want to do it in person with the kids so we can kind of have that time set aside and hopefully just get it done as opposed to emailing that because that was a question I received why I can't just email to the kids, which is a great question, but I think it would be better just to have it more contained and just try to get it done all at once. So we really want to get this. We need the data. We want to get it and we want to get the most accurate data that we can and, you know, full circle. And then, of course, if parents aren't comfortable with their kids doing this, you know, or just the kids in general or students in general, they can opt out. So that's what we're hoping for. And again, this is part of, we have to do this sort of grant. And our baseline data is, right now there's some data that was collected past year, but it was it's kind of all grouped together and not um, divided out by grade which is great, but it's really not that helpful because there is definitely a difference between kids in maybe sixth grade and what their drug use might be compared to 12th grade. I mean, of course, some kids don't use drugs at all, but, you know, the research has shown that kids more so in high school are using drugs than schools do. So we know if I can start it earlier, it's kind of heavier concentrated in high school. So we're looking to check out that data and then be able to implement strategies and prevention activities and whatever we need to do to hopefully combat that. So. That's the plan right now. Um, of course, I'm seeking approval from you guys to be able to do that. Kind of the gist of it. I don't, do you guys have any questions? That you? Yeah. I was just going to ask, um, with this actual, this exact survey that you're using, yeah. have you had an opportunity to look at the data that's come back on this type of survey itself from other sources and determine whether or not it's been 
as helpful to you as you would like it to be? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've looked at samples. I haven't actually looked at any, but any other community's data. And people, this is, so this is a pride survey, and anybody can use any survey that they want. So no, I, to answer your question, no, I haven't. I was just curious as to the questions are right. So when you get this back, it's going to be kind of a learning process for you based on this particular survey as to what type of data you get back and how useful it is. Sure, yeah, yeah, pretty much, exactly. Right. And we haven't, um, this is the first, we're, this is the first time we're working right. with the as well. So yeah, for okay. So two questions. Yeah. Do, you, do you need to get a certain percentage of the students and parents responding in order to continue to uh, be qualified for the grant? And two, who is this data going to after you get it? Mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, no, because we're just trying to collect the data, so I don't think it would um, hinder anything, the grants at all. Um, and then that data, it's going to, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly sure. I know we're going to do the do the surveys, send back to Pride. They're going to kind of analyze it and give us a um, whole markup of it. And then, I don't know if, I'm honestly not sure. I don't know if we would then, I, I'm, I know we're going to share it, but I don't know what realm of public knowledge it goes to. No, no I, I mean, does it have to go back to like the federal government, the, to the, or the state, wherever we got the grant from? Does the data, you, if this is mm -hmm. required by the grant that we do this, right? right? I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's, 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 part, of, that's part of um, what we're gonna be reporting on. We have two, it's, um, we have two progress reports that we have to do for the year. One's actually gonna be due in February. We don't have the state to report on since we're just gonna hopefully finish there in February. So our progress, it's called a progress report in August is what then we'll report this, we'll report this data to the grant. And is it a state grant or federal? It's federal. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, it's, we hope that they would answer them, it's just because we're trying to get the most valid data, but yes, I mean, of course, there's, there's all these data that might not be relevant or And how will we, how, in terms of the opt-out, um, will that, when we notify parents, will we notify parents first that your student's going to be asked to take this survey, mm -hmm. and you have the option of opting out, will that be made? clear up front? Yep, um, I believe it's going to be an email or a note home and then we're going to have a copy of the survey and this letter that parents can come in and come into the school and look at the survey if okay. they like and then they would need to let the school know if they don't want their child to take the survey. And then of course the child can say I want to do it. Does the child have to have the parent's permission to opt out? Um, well, I think it would be you know, like in the school if they're I would say no. If, if they're sit, you know, going to sit down during part of power block and don't want to do it, I would say that's their choice. Uh, but if the parents are wanting to do it, the parent would be right. ready to make that decision. Okay. Any other questions? What's the time frame for doing it? To administer it? Or we're hoping to do it in February. Um, and then the turnaround, I think hopefully we get it back within in a month or two or less than that. It is, and we have to order the service too, which usually we're supposed to order them about two weeks in advance of when we want to administer them. So as it is right now, in the early days of maybe mid February, is that. So we're, we're just in for February in general. Again, I might have missed this, but is this this is being offered to every student in grade six to twelve? Exactly. Yep. Every student. Yep. And you're going to encourage to take it, to encourage parents to do it. Yes, yeah, we're going to hope um, that they're going to. It's, it's a, you know, it's optional, of course. But, um, yeah, because it would really help our data and the grant and the information that we can gain. So. Maybe we can tell them that uh, a federal grant is involved. Mm -hmm. We need the money. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's good. Look at it. It's fairly comprehensive. Are there any other questions? A motion to uh, vote on doing this. Yes. Yeah. 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 I move to allow the administration of the um, Pride questionnaire for grade 60 12 and the Pride parent engagement and perception survey. Second. Need to second it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?
Thanks so much. I have cards in the past around just okay. for right. contact information. Thank you. Thank you. Wait. Three. Mm -hmm. Let's get his toolbox. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bruce. That's right, it will be disappointed. You know that. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. It's my annual State of the Buildings report. I don't sing it out there. I'd like to think I'm the voice of the buildings. Um, that will manipulate my report. Right? Okay, you probably have this, but um, we have 19 full time employees. Uh, there's eight at the high school. Three day, three day people, and then five in the afternoon. The hours at all schools are 6 a.m. or 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. There's three at this school, one day person, two in the night, and two at the hood, and two at the little, and two employees that are 70 days so multiple tasks. That's our, that's our 15 custodians, or two grounds maintenance workers. In the two man That's a maximum point. <coughs> so we, we replaced two employees, but a year ago, actually. Uh, Chet Spinney retired, and Julie Spur and I took a job as the building superintendent of the town, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Um, we have a one year probation period. Um, Paul Sonia took over a Browns position, and Dan Thomas took over a second shift position at the high school. One year probation, now they're full time employees. The statistical part of it, it's a little dry, but um, you know, if you did this before, um, it's generally 28 to 32,000 square feet per person per day. For It's not cost to clean, but it's it's good, good school cleaning. I've you know, done some research on this. Um, and we're, pretty, we're pretty close to that, too. Uh, we have made some changes over the years, and there's some input from Ron and we might. We made some changes a year ago, and we're still shaking it up. We're a little tight on maintenance, um, but we make it work. So we're fine-tuning our staff and their areas, and it's an ongoing, it doesn't really end. We have a lot of people we fill in for, um, or vacation, or sick, or bereavement, or any other reason we know. So before you move on to that, and I want to involve um, John and Michael and the rest of the committee, I'm under the impression, I'm under the firm belief that we're understaffed, and I hope you're not um, soft selling your staffing here, because I, I, I feel, I, I, I know we cut a position, and we added two schools that were a lot bigger than the old schools. So I don't, I don't think you have to be shy to say, yeah, it'd be much better if we had an. Okay. We find a way to do that. Well, that I understand. We've, but added, we've added approximately seventy eight thousand square feet to our school park. Correct. And we cut a, and we cut a custodian. <laughs> I'm, find a way to I'm trying to get you to say yes. We would love to have another custodian. So then when we go through the budget process. We're fighting to put a custodian. I think that's, that's made my opinions known. You made that clear. That's why I said we want to. We believe we're tight in, inside and outside. Correct. Facilities, campuses, the upkeep outside is, is, is done by two people. Right. And you know, I know, I know we have, you know, we try to work with the Parks and Rec Department and there's a relationship, relationship there, with but DPW they don't have a big right. department either. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that's just what, you know, we can't, yeah, we're here to educate students. But, but Wayne and his crew over the years have just done a tremendous job keeping these buildings up. Why, why you look at this school, which I believe is 11 years old, and it looks like it's brand new. Yeah, it opened in 2006. Correct. September. And it still looks pretty new. I'm sure Mr. Clean would, would agree with that. I mean, I know we got some windows and there are some issues with the old part, but for the most part, this school doesn't look much different than when we opened it 11 years ago. And I think that's you know a testimony to the great job that the 
um, custodial staff does. Actually, today we just fixed the doorbell in the kitchen, so we were going to be free, but they wouldn't go up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm not, not a complainer. No, I know. I know we excuses. We find a way to get it done. I know, but I just want to make sure that, you know, today, while you're still here, and in 10 years when you're retired, we're staffed properly here. Um, so I, I just hope that that's going to be reflected in the budget presentation. I can assure you it will be. Thank you. <laughs> I want to bat for you, Wayne. I think, I think you back, you know. <laughs> we didn't even practice this. It's a great place to work. It's, still, it's, it's a dynamic place to work. It changes rapidly. And it's just, you know, every day, it's, it's, it's such a dynamic place to work. So Wayne called you to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not speak to Wayne. Just some of the, I guess maybe the more drier stuff. The, 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 the town's my the rewards program. We've been very successful with grants and pursuing any number of things over and above our budget. My report lists several things we've been we, we successful obtaining. We Move inspection program, asbestos safety awareness training for a heat loss camera, septic system preventive maintenance program, air quality testing, and combustible gas detection program. Um, we bought it, we you know, a new van, we replaced a, uh, actually, we, if we replace a van, we move it down, we move it down, move it down, move it down. Now, the van we have, we have a spare 7D van. And one of the other vans that moved down to full time for food service. It's not 70 rated, but it will pass the inspection. You pretty much use it until they get out. From the little school, um, this past summer, we moved about three quarters of 38,000 square feet of the little school roof with a state of the art called SBS built up roofing uh, with a 20 year warranty. Pretty amazing to see the process. It, it, it was a, a little project, but a big scope. And so we accelerated the, the MSBA accelerated repair program under the total auspices of the state. Not unlike the building project. Smaller scale, same process. So pretty complicated. However, unlike the building project, we came in on time and under budget. Right. Oh, we were on time. And Wayne didn't feel like shooting himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And Wayne, Wayne was able to maintain his sanity. <laughs> and then, another, another, another good investment the town made five years ago. We put in three walk and bar condensing borders at Blue School. They are so reliable. I can go online every morning and they, 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 they are so reliable. Um, they're made in Kentucky. We have very little maintenance problems with them. Um, you know, just uh, pursuing things like that, maybe at the Blue School at some point. High efficiency, low cost, low maintenance, and it just it works so incredibly well. What's the life span of those? What do they say? 25 to 30 years. Really? Because they're smaller, right? They're, they're small, they're yeah. very compact. You know, they're really, you can't, you can't take a walk over there. Yeah, we've yeah. seen 10 to $15,000 saved. Wow. We analyzed that in the last five years. I always like to show behind the scenes things. You know, people don't normally see them. Do we have those here, too? No. We don't. No. Only, only. We, these are 1990. These are 2005, 2006. These are, these are, these are, they're a little over efficiency. They're not condensing boilers. Okay. The high school has condensing boilers. Right. Three. Right. Two, three if a little. And the old shell and two plate type cast iron boilers here and the bit. So. But they're, both, they're fairly new. Right. But at some point, when we replace them, we should replace them with, oh, who knows what we were around back then. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, the little. The controls are computer based, which is really another plus for us. We can have to move from home from an iPad at school, at the school. Um, another less high tech proposal is to remove all the asbestos floor tile from the school. We probably have about 4,000 square feet floor tile. All well protected, not unsafe, and watch it closely, but we want it removed. That's so cool. Can we get a grant for that, you know? Are there grants for that kind of thing? Mike, you know? I have not heard of it at all. It's just a, it's, it's a real challenge for us to <coughs> right. remove it safely. Um, we're thinking about replacing the gym floor for a little bit. We'll probably have some gym floor for a little bit. It's pretty well made up. I would have replaced it the day after it was put in. But that, <laughs> I wasn't we on the same committee. We have a proposal to replace it with similar one we have here. And one's a synthetic one. Yes. And the hood. They're resilient, they're, they're, they're cleanable, and they really hold up well. Yeah. This, in the summertime, this is clean and scrubby. It glows. Yeah. Really, 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 really. Good school, 
Um, again, a lot of the logic energy management controls at that school also. Um, we're going to up upgrade the gym lights at some point. Um, another major improvement was a two-year project to repay almost the entire parking lot. <coughs> it's pretty well paid up. Drainage issues and ice issues. And, um, so 90% of it's done. And the front walkway, which was heaving from ice over three years, has been neglected up and we put the concrete down. Come on, nice. Wait, on the lights, can we work, can we work with RMLD? And right. Again, are there grants for that? There and, are, there are. Okay, and credits, etc. But what's happening now is the new school is all what's called TH and T5s. Right. These are, these are TAs. The new technology is all LED. Well, I know Michael's been talking to. We've been talking about Johnson, Johnson Controls as right. a proposal. They, they work with communities to, to look at things like that. We play some more energy efficient projects and you know, finding ways to be creative with kind of funding it for the future and saving. But it's, there's Thank different you. things you can do. RMLD is a program. One thing that shocked me about the new school is, given when it was built, but I'm still at this day shocked that they weren't LED lights that right. we put in. It was, it was a timing right thing. On the, was it right on the yeah. cusp of right that, on really? On yeah. Yeah. yeah, so a little, right. little too early, right? right? Close. Yeah. Before they became affordable. Right. This school was in this level. Actually, maybe the 12th year. I'm not sure. Maybe the 12th year. As far as it, what, it, what it cost, Mr. Glean would never, never shy about mentioning things to me need to be done around here. Um, as far as a portion of our budget, it, it doesn't consume a lot of it. It's, uh, this is 88,000 square feet. Uh, it really, it, it operates well. Um, Everything in this, this place goes at least six days a week. And we set best of all week. week and it continues to be uh, easy to maintain. It doesn't consume a lot of our budget. We did some roof slate tile up on the, up the main roof. The 1919 building, 1920. That's, that's an old ongoing slate roof tiles in place there. And actually, hopefully this spring summer, we'll, we'll be upgrading the PG Street entrance. We'll up there. That, that's an original entrance. That used to be the old main entrance. And some window work. Uh, middle, school, middle School High School campus, 270,000 square feet, full operation. Common gym, cafeterias, media center, performing arts center, uh, the boilers, high capacity, highly efficient, um, two, three hundred ton capacity chillers. They sound really set up, they sound like jet engines. They're very high performance. Uh, we're still working out some issues with them, maintain, maintenance issues. Just it, 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 we're still shaking things up. We're still shaking things up. It's taking a while. Actually, the school is, what you understand, is it's, it's, it's the goal. So it's a pretty cool. The latest technology advances. Displacement ventilation. Back, I think, when we, when we, maybe 2005, when we were promoting the school, maybe a little later on that. Displacement ventilation, we had no idea what it was. Now we do. It wasn't air conditioning, it's conditioned air. Conditioned air. Oh, don't even stop. I won't. <laughs> That was my favorite argument of all time with the school uh, project. So a, a major part of that operation of school is the automated logic energy management system. It's very it's very high tech. We, we've been to class. We have we have, we, have, we have a company uh, coming in once a month to help us operate. There's a lot of things that we can fine tune things so fine, and if there's something was a little bit off, as opposed to me or my touching it, we try to be careful. So we, we brought a company once a month to go over all, you know, a couple of issues in one, a couple of middle school classrooms. We, we had trouble heating them and figuring out some things that might be wrong. And so we're still shaking things up. And it's been, since 14, 15, this is the third year, year of the high school. Mm -hmm. we, make, we make games every day. We do. So it, 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 it remains a challenge, it does. But we have a service screen with our better logic. We work on other service units. We have service units. We always have on the elevators. Um, we have we work on a service units with pest management company and other regulation we're keeping up to speed with. Um, the maintenance of maintenance of some equipment, which is very high tech equipment. 
And he's up his 19 years son of that school. You know, that's how long hot air or cold air, or hot air, hot liquid or cold liquid, goes up the roof and distributes to the school. It's up on the roof. Well, I think Wayne's point about, um, <clears throat> you know, we're still kind of shaking the tree and you know, finding out what leaves yeah. are going to fall off and what aren't. And it, it's a tremendous learning process. And, and, and I know Jerry and I and the others, we've talked to people at other communities that have built schools. And the biggest issue is the HVAC system. It like takes like five or six years to even get the thing functioning the way it's supposed to function. This is not something that's uh, only in our project. Right. Every project ever. It's always the HVAC system yep. and the balancing of it and, uh, and getting all of the, the wrinkles worked out of it. Because these systems are very, very complex. Yep. I think part of our challenge is finding companies, and they may say they're qualified to work this way, but we're finding out many times hardware, maybe they're not what the qualified is, they could be a shooting, and we're going to find companies that are fully qualified. Right. You, you can actually get a, uh, small size, small scale picture of that. If you go around your own home with a, a thermometer and put a thermometer in every room and check the temperature in every room and find out that they're not all the same. Exactly. Uh, that everything is is a little off, up or down. Whatever. And when you get something as complex as a school or a major building, it, 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 so I guess I'll finish my verbal part of saying in the last sentence. Uh, it's a little mundane, but it doesn't change from day to day. Clean is clean, safe is safe, warm is warm and dry is dry. They don't change. It's a daily challenge. You can high tech all you want, but clean is clean. If it's safe, it's safe. If it's warm, it's warm, it's dry, it's dry. So that's that's a daily challenge. It doesn't go away, it doesn't it doesn't change from year to year. It changes from season to season, maybe. It's always there. And I'm, I'm glad you didn't add pool. Well, I'm trying to find two. I got a little piece of equipment. One question. Dry is much better. Dry is much better. One question on the dry is dry. Um, you know, we, we have had a few leaks at the high school, middle school. Are, are we 100% set there, or are they still? I, I can answer, or Wayne, you can answer. Because we did have the leak recently in the. Uh, in the administrative administrative, yeah. administrative yeah. offices. Yeah. And, yeah. And, correct. How challenging this is is that one company is responsible for all the roofing, right? One company, 270,000 square feet. That's white rubber, okay? Right. This company buys skylights from a supplier. They mount them on a, uh, a framework. They mount them on a roof. And they recently found that one of the skylights was leaking. They caused some damage inside the building. Right. So there's some of this going on. Well, who's owned? The skylight guy owns it. The roof put it on. Who covers it? And we'll call them on, we do water testing, it's pretty, still yeah. within that framework of, you know, it's not mine, it's yours. Right. It's still, it's still but that's fixed, that. that area is fixed as far as we know? It is. Well, we might know in the next two days. Well, that's, we, we recently, we believe it is, and I think you're right. <laughs> oh, that's, that's we, we've got a big test coming tonight. Right, right. tonight, tomorrow, so. At, at all the schools. Right. We've been happy in the street, we Right. Happy Hopefully the little school we get no leaking. <laughs> At least in the new we part. Yeah, put on his roof. Oh, that's true. And, and I do want to just add, you know, the leak is it's, it's minimal. No, I know. And the interior damage was minimal. But it might look, maybe it looks worse than uh, It's actually been fixed. And it has? We had the interior worked on last year. Because it aggravates me every time I go. Yeah, it was aggravating me too. We, we, got, we actually had a painter come out and he repaired it. With, within 48 hours he did the work. Actually, it, came out, it was very inexpensive. Great. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, just a, a little comment about while Wayne was here. Um, you know, I, I don't, it's no secret how committed Wayne is to his work. He does a, a wonderful job. He's extremely, <coughs> extremely committed to his work, and as is his staff. Um, the the middle high school campus has has really, I think, um, opened the eyes of a lot of us in, in what its needs are, the sophistication of the systems, and, and Wayne has really. Uh, born the brunt of a lot of that, um, and it has required a significant amount of his time uh, to be dedicated on that building as we've learned, as we've grown. I think we're in, you know, we're, we're continuing to learn, but I think the direction, kind of the trajectory has been a positive one. We're learning and it's been, you know, I think we're, we're, we're coming to uh, a good place, you know, the, the growth has been there. And I, 
comments, and I think that's a good thing. I don't think it, it, it should go unnoticed, though, that because so much of Wayne's time and effort has gone to the middle school and the high school, that a lot of other people have had to uh, assume responsibility at our elementary schools. And that includes the principals um, of each of those three schools, as well as um, the custodial staff. They, they have had to, to go without Wayne, so to speak, to a degree that I don't think that they were used to, because so much has been has been consumed at the middle high school. So I want to just acknowledge that, that you know, it's been a kind of a district effort to make sure that um, the resources were put toward making sure that our beautiful new middle high school has, has come to an operational place that we wanted to be at. But that there has been some, some challenges and oh, yeah. some extra energy put into the, the elementary schools and that effort um, is appreciated. Not a day goes by, it's very rare that Wayne and I don't have a conversation about something that's going on at the middle high school. Again, he's very dedicated um, and, and seeks to, to really provide the best learning environment in all of our schools. And I just I want to publicly you, acknowledge you. that. I, I get so. very few comments from other schools about <coughs> elementary saying, you're never here. You know, but I, we have a rapid reaction. You know, something happened, I don't get aware of it. And try, try to feed your like every school in the same, in the same plan. You know, it does consume a lot of time. You know, it's high tech. Uh, the job used to be like this, and then, then it's been like this a couple of years, and all of a sudden it's done. It is very, very challenging. And to stay up with it. Uh, tremendous support, but it's... Let me hear I think we for one more. <laughs> I do have, you know, this have Michael, too. Now that Wayne Michael has, has pitched in an awful lot here. Yeah, with, yeah. With, with Wayne here, he may not be able to answer this question. <coughs> I know there's been issues at the high school gymnasium with the shot clock. I don't know if you've been... Right in the loop on that. I think we get that up here. Yeah, that was okay. about two weeks ago, right? Yeah, the CDC. Yeah. So we got that as far as we know it's fixed. The horns and the lights. So, okay. The Excellent. Did that, did that, yeah, he wasn't even prepared. He can't even answer that question. Part of it is, part of it is finding the right person. To fix. Yeah. And you say, well. Because those are, yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not yeah, a specific. Something exactly. to fix. A yeah. So when you, what you still hear up there, well, it's not a warrant. Yeah. Other schools, we know we own. Right. And there, it's like. Right. Is it under one? Is yeah. it extended one? Yeah. And sometimes it is. But we save money by pursuing the extended one. Yeah. That's covered for three or five years. Uh, I just want to add to the Wayne and the staff, I always say this, and the principals obviously, and everybody that works at the schools does a great job. And I, Wayne's pointed out several times that we don't just have the high school, middle school uh, campus, we have the other schools that they have. Yeah. I see it's going forward. I have two biggest challenges, really. And I know there's a lot of challenges. The biggest ones, I think, are the HVAC at the uh, middle school, high school and maintaining the outside yeah. of the buildings. Yeah. The Brown, inside of the Brown. buildings, the entire time I've been here, it's never been an issue. They've always looked great, they always look sparkling clean. Uh, but the outside is, is, a, is a challenge. Well, those new fields we've added, we've added yeah. a tremendous amount uh, of stuff. field yeah, space. I think, John, if you can continue to uh, support Wayne and complement them with the outside services that we had wow. last year, that was they did a tremendous job. They really did. And the yeah. problem is, I don't want to see it get to where right. the point where it was at that it was so bad that you know we had to come in and make a major effort to get it right. to look good. You know what I'm saying? So yes, if we can do. space it out in time. So that our plan is it's a good question and I think our plan because we were starting that um, landscaping service with the new fiscal year with the summer was yeah. the first um, we have four I think maintenance periods with them scheduled and what that what we kind of timed that with is kind of the, the, the preparation for the opening of school. Um, a fall cleanup, kind of a spring cleanup, and then the, the grad, so-called graduation preparation. So now is that cycle, and we've done uh, we've done two of those. And it has worked very well. What it allows our our two staff to do is kind of fill in between those big major cleanups. And because so, just the weeding alone, around. Oh, yeah. it's just yeah, a monumental. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, all the plantings, the trees, yeah. the plants, the shrubs, the flowers. But that. that the contract is a really very, very, very pleased with that. Yeah. So that is the plan going forward. So let, me, let me show you my refractometer. Oh. I'm cool, huh? <laughs> what this is, I'll give you, I'll give you a quick count. Um, all the schools have 80 freeze, or what we call it, what happens if I they keep some things more freeze. All, all, the, all the liquid that flows around that is really <coughs> hot, it's, 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 it should be 30. Two to thirty-three percent effort of life. So what this is, I can measure. I brought some in from. Uh, brought some in. Is that vodka? Oh no, it's not vodka. <laughs> it's, it's a different color. Tequila. Yeah, tequila. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah, a lot of Kentucky yeah. tonight. This, this is the liquid in all of, in all of piping, eating and cooling. What this what this will show is the strength of the antifreeze or glycol in the mixture. I'm not sure. I'll hold it. You hold it to the light. Should tell you the percentage of methane glycol. I don't think an English major is going to understand this. I, I'll look at it, but it's not a kaleidoscope. <laughs> no. So Wayne, what do you have to actually get a sample of the yeah, water that's flowing? It's a liquid. Come on, right. Should say so where do you get that sample from? Right. How do you get it from? Them? I have it in my home, my home heating system. Like a little release house. Yeah, that's it. They drain a little bit out and tells it whether it needs to be replaced. Can you see it? Should see like 32 bits. It's the line on the left. It's the line on the left. Left side. Oh yeah. When is propane? When is left thing? When are the other stuff like that? Should be 32 percent. I can see Sean. I say Jerry. Jerry thinks he's a pirate on the ship here now. He's like, land a hole. Glasses. The best toy ever, though, was the uh, yeah, the infrared, yeah, the, the yeah, thing right. that uh, that the temperature yeah. thing. Yeah. That, that thing was good. That and the Geiger counter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really good. That was before you did the Geiger counter. It was like a Geiger counter. It's right on the table. I know. <laughs> and right in front of the two Where? Right in front of Jerry. Right there. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Right. 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 Stop looking. Was that was that for the grants or no? Because I know a lot of times you bring things that you got through the grants. The MII, as we say that. Yeah, that's excellent. Somebody says, what's the, uh, what's, the, what's the percentage of the 80 freeze in your heating and cooling? Heat and cooling? How often do you test that? Once a month. Once a month. It shouldn't stay like that for a long time. Yeah. Questions, comments? Oh, good job. Great job. Thank you very much. I always come no one, no one ever asked me any questions. Well, I asked you a million during the thing. You answered them all. You even you answered the shot clock question. And Wayne, it's nice to see you appear to be so calm and relaxed. I, I haven't seen yeah, I haven't you relaxed in a, a couple while. of years. It's the glycol. Are you on the glycol? 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 He's down about a quad. It's not good to drink one. No. It'll kill you. It seems very calm. It'll kill you. Yes. Anything else? No. Thanks, Wayne. Right. Good job. Thank you, Wayne. It continues. I've been here 18 years. It continues to be a great place. It's dynamic. It's, it just it changes so quickly. And, you know, staying up with it, it's just it's energizing. Really good. Good. Yeah, it's good to see you still maintaining that enthusiasm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Wayne. Thanks. Thank you, Wayne. I think we'll go back to regular form here. And, uh, Continuing business and the SSPC update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one thing, I, I wanted to follow up with you from my last meeting on the one on the water fountains. I've been put speaking at the middle high school. Um, there is, um, you know, we're, we're continuing to just, you know, again, it's one of these things that sounds silly, maybe, but the water, the water fountains, but they are very complex. They're very high tech, very sophisticated. Um, with sensors inside of them that um, allow for students to fill water bottles as opposed to just getting a drink and all. We're just we're finding that like like other systems in that school um, that they require a pretty significant amount of maintenance, and one of those uh, maintenance items is filter changes. And so we did have some work done that um, would bring a little bit more balanced pressure in to some of the water fountains, particularly in the gymnasium area where, where pressure, pressure spikes were fluctuating and the water pressure would, you know, the, when a student would go up to the water bottle, or anybody would go up to the water bottle and try to drink it. Sometimes it's <coughs> sometimes it's high, and we think we've resolved that piece of it. But 
what we've since learned is that what's contributing to that in other parts of the building are um, these filters that are installed. And so we, we, uh, we learned that they need to be ch changed more regularly, um, far more regularly than I think I would like because there is an expense to that. And there are, um, there are 16 water bubbles throughout the building each of which has three components. So there's a kind of a handicap accessible bubbler, a stand bubbler, and this water bottle fill. So it's it's more. It's, there are 48 changes that have to occur, and um, it's 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 complex. So we, we've kind of gotten ourselves onto a maintenance schedule now with having a supply of these. The, the filters aren't just you don't know, just go to Home Depot and buy them. They're a special order. I've asked uh, Wayne and my parent kind of when we when we now get this next shipment in, which is due any day now. It was actually supposed to be here last Thursday, but um, that we will have a kind of a reserve on hand so that we can kind of replenish that as we go. But we've been told that North Reading has particularly hot water, and because of that, it kind of the filter, I guess more ra the best way to describe it would be more rapidly. It needs to be changed more frequently because it's more it's more uh, rapidly absorbing some of the minerals that you know you might not if they had softer water. Is, is how I understand it. So well, that's it's a, an ongoing it's an ongoing item. It's, it has our attention. You know, we're working to resolve it. Um, but again, it's it's one of those things that we we're kind of learning as we as we go on, so to speak. Well, the water thing is true. I, I've had I've had issues at my house. The, so high, yeah, the, the town does have hard water, so that's an issue. There's a lot of minerals. Mm -hmm. A lot of iron that has, has to be um, filtered out. So that should change soon with uh, MWR. That's correct. Uh, have we, oh, have, right. that should have we investigated uh, the, the possibility of eliminating the filters? We did, and that 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 did not work well for us. We did that actually quite early on, and what it did was it, it the filter, I believe also helps to balance the pressure of the water coming in. And when it was out, when the filter was out, the pressure was too high, and that caused other complications. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was explored as kind of a cost savings option to not have the filter. We actually had a big swimming lesson. I think four people in place uh, with water water. water, 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 water. <laughs> also, I can say, John, is, you know, and this is just my recollection. You know, it's not documented. <laughs> My recollection is that there was a problem with those water bubbles from day one. Yes. So all of this is about filters and everything that may be true, but I don't think they ever work right. Well, so to that point, I'm not so sure I disagree. Yeah. Um, and part of what I wrote in my report to you was the PMA representatives have been working with me because I, I, have, um, I have documentation going back to at least September of 2015. I think before that. Um, yeah. And you could be right. That, you know, I, didn't, I didn't exhaust an awful lot of time, but I, that, that was sufficient for PMA for me to be going back to September of 2015, um, identifying that I thought there was a problem with, with water bubbles. So they are working with me, too, and with Gilbane. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure I disagree. In fact, I, I think I agree with you. I think that there is more to it than this. But we have an independent plumber now that's doing our work contract and service, and I met with him last Wednesday, um, and he seems to think that this parts issue with the, the filters and all will, you know, more regularly changing them will, will have a positive effect, whether it's the solution or not, I just don't know. But there's still some not option. As of today, there, there's no change today from what you folks do Most on, on January 9th, not. largely because, largely because the pot we haven't been able to, we have we ordered the we ordered the pots right away, they, we just haven't received them. We, they were due to be in last Thursday, but as of this morning they hadn't arrived. So once they come, the work can begin to to, to, to have them all operate. That's the goal, obviously. But um, no, they're not, not nothing is different than it was two weeks ago. So those ones in the auxiliary gym are working? The, oh, yes, the ones in the auxiliary gym, the ones, the ones we had had prior to they're still working as a they're, yeah, they're working. They're, they're working the best in the building. Right. So. And that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. It, it just seems to me that uh, since I drink the water and always have straight out of the tap without a filter, uh, and I suspect it's in the tap to do the same, that uh, maybe we don't really need filters. 
Yeah, but Jerry, Jerry made the point you might want to make a public. Drink that water out of the tap if you're only 38. He's <laughs> 38 years old and he's in the <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. The water company is to point in 2019, if all goes to plan, we will have MWRA water, which is of much higher quality than we are. Water, 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 which yes. is as good as water as you can get. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Next okay, item on our agenda is the school trip. North Reading High School in the Club. I've been our last meeting, We've done some further investigation on that. Uh, and uh, are we, we want to just work off of what we had before. You want to present something further on it? So, Mr. Chairman, I think at our last meeting there was um, some question around um, the school committee's role in. Um, Approving or denying and enacting upon a proposed uh, foreign travel um, experience for students. And so I think between, Mrs. Kopke, I don't want to speak for you, but I think between your conversation with um, the representative from the Mass Association of School Committees and my reaching out to um, the school committee's attorney, I think their opinions seem to be somewhat in sync that, um, that the school committee does, you know, it's advised to, to take action. Okay, to either approve or, or deny a trip proposal, um, but also to have um, an understanding that obviously there's a liability when we, you know, I don't think that came as any surprise to anyone. I mean, there's certainly is a liability for a day field trip, and, but we make sure that we have precautionary um, steps undertaken. And I think you know, with working with a third party vendor like this trip does, um, as well as, um, if this trip is approved, it would be the third time that we would have an additional insurance. Right. Michael, am I correct? The trip to Scandinavia this April is the second, um, where we, we've actually asked for an additional um, insurance um, to further strengthen our position. But, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that something couldn't happen and that the, the, the district or the town wouldn't be liable. I mean, that, that's always, I think, the case, but I think we have positioned ourselves well that a good experience with EF as the vendor, and I think the additional insurance, which Michael did a lot of work a couple of years ago with our town's insurance carrier, Maya, um, and it was on their recommendation the policy we are now uh, using. It was it was on their recommendation, correct? So, yeah. so I think that's the best information I have for you. It, it would be my um, preference, and quite honestly, I don't think I would come to you with a recommendation for a trip if the committee weren't going to act on it. I think it's, I think it's the appropriate action. Is it, the committee takes some, some sort of form of a vote either to approve or, or, or deny. For purposes of discussion, I will <coughs> make a motion to approve the high school trip to China for 2018, April 2018, um, for purposes of discussion. Second. Any second for the discussion? I, I, um, you know, I have a little trepidation about this, but uh, you know, in speaking with uh, Mr. Bernard and others, uh, it's clear that even if we approve this tonight, um, if issues came up um, related to the safety of potential safety of our students and staff and chaperones, we have the ability to cancel the trip. I also know that um, the company works closely with the State Department, EF. Um, so I, I feel comfortable that um, if something were to happen between today and you know January of next year, that there is an opportunity for us. The trip could be canceled, postponed. And my understanding is those committed who paid wouldn't lose their money or at least lose all their money. Correct? Is that? Yes. Yeah, so, well, so I don't, <laughs> I don't want to misrepresent, but I, I, you know, I don't know off the top of my head what the reimbursement policy would be when students would forfeit whatever percentage or all of their fees, you know, depending upon the time that we cancel. I know that there is a fee structure on that, on what so many days out and what that reimbursement is. I will tell you, quite candidly, that in the past, even 
when we endorse these trips. And things have gone on in the world that have caused me concern. It was two years ago in France. Regardless of where we were traveling, it was just the fact that we were going to be sending students overseas. I remember distinctly having a conversation, you know, pulling the advisors together and the high school principal at the time and saying, okay, what's, what's the plan here? I'm getting a little, you know, concerned about. And the, the, advi the uh, advisors, Mr. Nosey being one of them that you met a couple of weeks ago, provided me with a view into what EF's response, they have a very, you mentioned they work with the State Department, they have a very good <coughs> response plan. And I know this is a reality you said, you know, your daughter has traveled, so you, she's experienced that. They have a, a very good plan in place. If you're unfortunate that while they're traveling, something were to occur of a nature that you know, we don't need to discuss, but you know, some sort of an emergency nature. So, you know, I think it's fair to say to you that I would certainly, and I think it would go even beyond January, you know, if I didn't like what was going on, you know, I'd be, I'd be going to the high school and saying, look, I really think we need to rethink this, or we at least need to talk about it because I've done it already. And I also can tell you that um, in my peer group, often, every once in a while, I'll get an email like, you know, has anybody endorsed a foreign travel trip? Like, are you, you know, what are you doing? Like, you know, they, they'll ask each, we'll ask each other, like, are you concerned about, are you taking any different actions based on something, an event that might have happened? And so that occurs too. So we kind of, you know, talk to each other. So I would be very mindful of that. Uh, even up until the day we left, regardless, you know, of what the reimbursement policy would be, you know, that's something we would, I'd figure that out. Well, and before, we, use, but I, before parents sign up their children, they're they, going to know, they know, they know what the financial issues they are. They know that. Anyway. Right. So <laughs> it's a very... I'm more concerned with the safety, Yeah, I guess. Oh, absolutely. It's, so, that's, that's paramount. It's first but so, so based on my discussion <laughs> with you and other... I, I, I'm going to support the, the trip. As long as... Because I, I know that the company is not going to just send, and we're not just going to send our kids off somewhere knowing that there might be an unsafe situation. Right. So I'm comfortable with that. The note that we got back from uh, the uh, council. Uh, yes. There's a couple of lines here. You would want to, you would want a contract with a third party provider that has insurance provisions and demonstrations. Well, that was in the proposal that there would be that. Correct. But we are not doing the contracting, uh, as I understand it. We're not doing the contract. We're not going to sign a contract with the uh, exposition group. The contract, I believe, is between the student and the and the, and the third party vendor. But I, I, I really, yeah, I really, I'm not. I can't look you in the eye though and say I'm 100 percent certain that one of our chaperones hasn't signed something with EF. I'm not aware of that. Um, but I don't believe so. And there's another line. Uh, make sure you have an agreement in place with appropriate protections in place and representations needed from the trip provider. That I know we have. I, I have those actually, as well as our own additional insurance. So we don't have, we're not doing an agreement. The, the district is not signing a contract. No, with the, I'm not. You're not. No, correct. The district is not signing. So if we approve this, are we becoming, in essence, this is an attorney type thing? Are we becoming the to, to, to it? And and I I think <coughs> that in the event that we are not going to have a contract with the provider, that our uh, our policy on foreign travel allows it allows for us to permit advertising for travel purposes within the established policy for distribution of in, in information within the, the system. Mm -hmm. And I I don't think I have any problem with allowing the advertising and allowing the distribution of information. But I do have a problem with our moving to approve the trip, especially with the, the information we got back from MASC, that if we're not signing the contract, then we are not covered, I think, by the indemnification and, and insurance provisions. 
but we are getting liability. Correct. And I, I don't, I don't think that's a good position for us to be in. I, I, I'm afraid I'm not in favor of, of approving the trip. And I don't have a problem at all with approving advertising of the trip. Yeah. Advertising, you may passing the information around in the school that it's there and, and using the system to let parents know that it's available. But then that, doesn't that contradict the overnight one? Because it says that we have to approve any overnight stays. The fact that we're going above and beyond to get this additional liability, then aren't we proving that we're accepting responsibility for the way something does happen? That's what Lyman has said. It's basically that you, we need additional protection. Right. But I think we have it, right? We do have it. Only we've opted for it. Right. We have additional insurance for Maya, I mean, correct? Correct. So we do. that saying that we're... If we're getting that insurance, we're, right, in, right. we're improving the trip. Right. By us getting that insurance, right? We're essentially approving the trip already. Well, I mean, we have it there whether we use it or put it, you know, or not. It's, it's there available to us. If, right. So, I mean, if, if, we're paying if there's for no it, trip... Right. If the kids are paying for that additional insurance, then we've already said... Well, that isn't that's only happened for a trip you've approved. Correct. Right. 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 Yeah. right. But going forward... Correct. Yeah. That's an annual renewal, so you'd have time to revisit that. I think that the other provisions of late night, overnight tra uh, trips, as to travel, and uh, I think those are really not applicable to this because those are typically for school organized trips where we control what's going on. But that's the point where we are we are contracting like Washington, I think we actually connect. Mm -hmm. We are that, but that's a tour company, Clifford. I think it's the same thing. The parents, I think, contract directly. That's, that's again another case then that we should be, uh, you know, we haven't been as diligent as we should have been. Perhaps. Even going to, like the trip to Quebec last year, I don't remember. I think the teacher may have actually planned all that out the Quebec trip last time, right? But fortunately, all of them seem to have turned out all right. I'm reading, I'm reading this a little different, but I'm reading this as them as, as Liam saying that you're better off having a third party provider than you are having the teachers to make the arrangements. I agree with that. Uh, that, 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 that right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. it says, the one could argue that the committee would be taking on more right. responsibility and liability when it approves the plan executed by the teachers rather than third party provider. So we, here we have a third party provider, right? It, it, well, we sure. don't have yeah. No, but the third party provider is the one that's made the arrangements. a third party yeah. provider. Yeah. So why are we attaching ourselves to that? Well, the option is to either approve or not approve. If we don't approve, what does, what's, what's that mean? If we don't We're still going to be liable. What does anyway. that mean? Yeah, well, does that mean that if the committee doesn't approve, they're not going? They're not going. Right. I would not. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't send them. Right. So. But then, I mean, then that, then we're making a decision that we not allowing any more travel because we, I mean, I we have to follow suit or, or any right, or, or any overnight travel. So the Washington trip could never. Would have to be canceled. Right. Or you'd have or, to make different. Or ranges. even the hockey one that they go to. The well, no, those overnight. that would make our own arrangements. Yeah, but still overnight. No, we no, but what we're saying that, is. I, I think that would be just policy next one, Jay. Right. Yeah. We, we could, but there's still potential liability issues. Sure. You, know, right. you approve them right. going down to the, the Cape, whether it's mm -hmm. in their parents' cars or it's in the bus or whatever it is. We had an issue with the. There was no liability. We had an issue with the student council thing several years ago. <laughs> Remember there was a drinking issue, and some of our students were involved several years ago. There was no liability, but parents had to get down there and pick up their kids and uh, and bring them home. So, but but again, there's liability issues. No, of course. But you know, there's always going to be liability issues. I think I, the, to me, the whole thing is confusing. What what the instructions we get 
from M uh, MSA, MS, yeah, yes. MASC and then from Liam. I almost see them as, uh, I almost see Mike Gilbert from MASC saying, we, you know, you can approve it, but we kind of recommend you don't. Yes, and then absolutely. Liam's, and there right. are many districts. Right. And Liam is saying, almost go ahead, approve it. It doesn't really matter as long as you have that extra insurance. So it's like we're almost getting conflicting. You know, Mike Gilbert saying that I probably, probably. Like from Mike's perspective, he said the minute you say yes and it's a formal vote, then we're saying that we support this. We're endorsing, we're endorsing the trip. This. Well, see, the problem I have with Mike is that it, looked, it sounded to me like his opinion was more directed at the potential conflict, and it's addressed in our policy, by the way. And I talked to him, and that wasn't it. You sure? That wasn't okay. it. Okay, because it's actually addressed in our policy about yes. having. Because I said to him, I said, can you tell me exactly why you're saying that? He said, because the minute you say yes, you're endorsing it, and there's liability. So I said, well, there's, we are seeking other Well, the other option insurance. is there's no trip. Right. The other option is there's no trip. And I think we assume some liability on every trip that yeah. we have to do this kind of thing. Just do it. It's not a, we know, I, I'm proud that something will occur. Our staff are there. We still not, there's still no level of liability there. You know, yeah. I still think. It could certainly be implied. It could certainly be implied if you have not yeah. running teachers running the trip, taking the kids, whether we endorse or don't endorse it. We can't. You can't always uh, just, you know, discharge liability. But right. see, this is the problem. A foreign, a foreign travel plan then has to be rewritten because it says we won't endorse the trip, and by voting on it, we're endorsing the trip, right? Well, the problem with the policy bill is on JH, JHFB. Yeah. That what's the definition of a school sponsored trip? But JHFB doesn't recur to, doesn't apply to foreign travel at all. I understand, but I'm sorry, it's, 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 there's no definition of school sponsored trip. Well, that's why when I threw this out to the listserv, many districts have said they've had to redo, redo a lot their of their policies yeah, to reflect these changes and these suggestions. So, I mean, I because the JHFB, that. although it doesn't mention far travel, it talks about participation right. of right. field trips and excursions that take right. place overnight. Right. And, it, but, and again, there's no definition of what's a school sponsored trip. But we specifically have a policy on foreign travel, mm -hmm. JHFA, which says that we will not endorse, sponsor, or assume responsibility for any travel. But uh, we'll permit advertising for travel purposes within our established policies and distribution of information. So the question is by okay. saying yes, approving it, are we endorsing it or are we just we're approving allowing, it? We're allowing the, uh, the, the trip organizers to advertise it within the school under, under JHFA. Yeah, I mean that, that would be if you're going to follow JHFA, it would be that no actions are required. Yeah. And again, I mean, I assume this guidance is from NMC, yep. so it kind of matches so, with my illness. So what we could do is we could decide that no actions are required, and that the trip can go on, and we will allow the yeah. uh, advertising for travel purposes. John's saying he's not going to allow the trip to go for I we don't approve it. Yeah, I, I would be uncomfortable with that. Not to put you in a bad space. I just well, it's also, even though it's foreign travel, it's still we'd have to do it under both because it's but an all, overnight thing. So our policies are conflicting. That's yes, the yeah, issue. It well, uh, it, they're not conflicting until you get to foreign travel. Foreign travel is defined. And it says we're not approving these trips. But when the foreign travel involves taking well, a right. school day off or overnight or missing, then the late night overnight comes in. Right. Why? Well, I don't have a problem with that either way. I would approve the travel. Same here, but uh, I, I, I that would be against our policy, J H. But we've done it past. <laughs> we've approved okay, these trips so for we can say under J uh, J H F A that 
we'll allow them to advertise, but under JHFB, we have to say that it's okay that they can spend overnight. So, <laughs> okay, you can go to China, but you have to be right back. Don't spend the night there. Right. No overnight. Can, what, this isn't the first time this trip has occurred, right? right? Foreign trip? No, we've applied, no, we've had them every year, I think. So we, we've had you series. approved it every year, right? Yes. But we've there's been over the last few years the Mass discussion. Association of School Committees has been telling committees that we shouldn't be approving this kind of trip because it then puts more liability on the school district versus on the parent and the student. So, but wouldn't that make more sense to look? I think you said the policies need to be. I think the policy and not hold up something that is already in the works. Right. I, yeah. yeah. Cliff's point is though is that we're violating our policy if we approve it. I'm saying well we've been violating the policy every year. Yeah, we're yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. What policy do you think applies? We're violating one more. Well, I don't think there's any question. I don't think there's any question that JHFA applies as far as travel. Right. So it applies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the question is, is the uh, essay, uh, uh, Janine pointed out, what do we do with uh, JHFB? Uh, doesn't apply. And I've always, you know, I've always taken the position, it's our policy. We can change it. <laughs> so, but, but the other policies don't apply within to foreign travel because foreign travel, we don't. Yeah. I don't know about that loophole because they're going overnight. Well, it, it's moved. Well, it doesn't say except for foreign travel. Well, I mean, do we have to approve it for the overnight? And they're just absent. That's the parents' yeah. choice to keep a them day absent. Trip, a day trip to Quebec would fall under the same thing. Okay. Okay. I mean, you, could, you just add the you United know, States to the overnight. And then, does that clarify it? And then you just default to the foreign travel for all four. It's almost like you could say U.S. The late, you can almost say that the foreign travel policy, policy JHFB, does not apply. But it does. Yeah, see, I think it does. But, <laughs> I didn't know that it but if, you, if, you, if, you, if you didn't think it did, then maybe expand the foreign travel policy to incorporate some of the provisions of the overnight travel policy. Or you could say policy. continental okay. U.S. If the overnight World travel World. policy <clears throat> would apply if you, if you permit it. But you're not permitting foreign travels. You're not. You're not uh, endorsing, sponsoring, or assuming responsibility for any travel plan. What's the difference between endorsing and approve? That's that's a question. You, you might not like that they're going to China. That might not be the place you want them to go. Is that you're not endorsing where they're going? Jerry, what do these words mean? <laughs> well, I, I think it's a fine line. I mean, I think endorsing is a more uh, forceful action, you're just approving. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're encouraging, or you're, right. you know, you know what I'm saying? Encouraging. So I mean, we need to either have, have, we need to have the word approve in there. I think if we're not going to, it should say we'll not approve. If that's how we feel, I mean, I, I feel this policy really limits any sort of international travel for our high school. Policy. Me and Janine, I think me and Matt Julie, I think. Or it doesn't, I think it's a it doesn't. <laughs> actually, yeah, it is. You know, <laughs> in all honesty, in all honesty, I, I would, I would refer to JH, I would refer to JHFA, and say that look, um, that this obviously this policy, John, obviously contemplates foreign travel by students. Yeah. But what it says is the school committee is not going to endorse, sponsor, or assume responsibility for any travel plan, but will permit advertising. So if basically we said, look, in reference to this policy, we're going to allow the trip, okay? We're not going to approve it. We're not going to endorse it. We're not going to sponsor it. Um, and therefore, by us not approving it, then JHFP doesn't apply. Yeah, but John says he's not going to. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying this, what John's option is. And the other simple thing would be to just approve this. And, and, <laughs> and comply with the overnight policy. And review the policy yeah. for future endeavors. 
if they did it completely within because you know what? Period. Julie yeah. brings up a good, a good point, though. What? You could read this so that we, as long as we don't endorse it, sponsor, or assume it, doesn't mean we can't approve it. Well, so approve is to sanction officially, right. to ratify, to confirm. Right. Endorse is to support, to back, to give one's approval to. So endorse it's means to approve. It's so close. it's. <laughs> But, but I think I think approval. It may be that we can approve this. It doesn't say that we have to. That we uh, we can't approve it. It says we're not going to endorse it, sponsor. Endorse it means to push it, to, right. to get it, to promote it, to promote it, right. more or less. Whereas approving it is just saying, okay, we're going to allow it. Allowing it to happen. Yeah. So I think we could allow it. Yeah. I think we can. I think we can it allow it. Doesn't specifically preclude us from approving it. But I would ask that moving forward we. Take a look at that. It. Whoever's on the that's policy. That's a good point. So <laughs> the endorsing versus the approval. Yeah. Me, and it, Mr. Bernard, and we, can, we fix these policies. I think we can approve the trip on the JHFA. And Julie already has some samples if she kept them. Can we disapprove? Oh, she never sent yeah. it. Yeah. But I, oh, I, I think we disapprove it. I think we can. We can say no. If somebody wants to take a trip during vacation, you're going to keep Julie's family from going no. to Disney World? No, it's got nothing to do with Julie's family. It's got if the school, if it's that there are school personnel involved in the trip and we're looking at it as a... Um, yeah, go ahead and advertise, but if you pull your kid out, we don't want to know about it. I thought they were using the school dance. School so I, I think we so can approve that, Yeah, but like, I'm going to pull out my daughter to go on a school trip. Don't say that in front of John. If you, want to, uh, if you want to use semantics, if, if you want to use semantics, <laughs> approve it under JHFA and then require them to comply with JHFA. My motion is just to approve it, and that's, I'm yep. sticking with my motion. I agree. And then throw it to the policy subcommittee. Right. With it. And the policy subcommittee needs to deal with this. Yeah, I think if you, like this, if you like the idea of foreign travel, but feel like your policy has some ambiguity, <coughs> so you'd like to tighten it up, and maybe that's the way to go. Who was on the policy committee on April 8th, 2013? Cliff was. It's right here in black and white. I was not the superintendent that day. It's that Kathy Wilson. I suspect that uh, perhaps the wording of this is organized around the Mike Gilbert. I, I would which play ASCs, which if you were to get sticky on something and we violated that, we would be in more trouble in court, wouldn't we? I put 100% blame on Karen Hurricane. <laughs> she was on the policy subcommittee <laughs> in April 2013. Cliff <laughs> <laughs> is here, denies all responsibility. <laughs> if you follow my policy, I won't mind. I'm, I'm with Val. Yeah. And make sure they comply with it. Is there any further discussion? Do we have a motion still? Yes. Thank motion by Jane, Jane second to approve. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, no. That was one against four. Thank you. Thank you. Can't come back and get. Yeah, that's okay. That's a board time. Jeez, look at some things we need tonight. Yeah. All right. Uh, next. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the divorce school child care rates. Thank you very much. So, in your packet this evening, we have a memorandum with some uh, comparable data and some information about our divorce school child care program. Essentially what's before you this evening is we kind of feel that it's time to look at the before school child care rates that are being charged uh, to families in need of the program. Um, you know, we, what we really have done is you know, analyze the, the projected revenue and the cost of this program and what's kind of happened is the rates have not been increased or looked at for a number of years. I think it's almost going back to about 10 years or we have had an increase and in that period of time um, you know we've actually found it in the in most recent years becoming a little bit more increasingly difficult to make sure 
the revenue coming in from the program is covering all our, our direct costs. So um, essentially what our direct costs are is the staff that are involved in the program, the supervisors and, and so forth. And, um, they do receive a small you know, salary increase or rate increase annually. Um, and the rates of that of the program have not increased for a long time. So what's happening is because there's been a delay in, in looking at the rates, we are finding it a little more challenging to cover, to cover the cost of the program. And when we look at what the comparable um, or kind of going market rate is for these services uh, in this area by looking at some of the area schools that are included in the spreadsheet, uh, we have found that our sort of average daily rate, if you look at it from an apple to apple comparison, and, and look at what uh, these districts are charging families per day, we are significantly lower than it seems to be the goal rate for these services. So I will say, I think the, the recommended increase tonight is really driven by cost and, and the comparable data that was researched was just to kind of verify and confirm where things are at um, to make sure we had a an equitable and, a, and a, um, you know, an advantageous recommendation this evening. Um, so essentially, what we have proposing this evening is that we we increase rates um, before school rates next year um, incrementally to ensure that we will certainly cover the cost of the program. It's important that we continue to do that um and certainly get closer to what seems to be the, the norm or, or kind of the average daily rate by some of our area uh, school districts but as even with the increase that we're proposing for next year uh, we would still be below what communities are charging in the area and we would certainly plan the, with the proposed rate increase we feel we would be able to cover our costs for at least the next two years and we would kind of revisit this on kind of an every other year basis and just you know, continue to do the research and potentially come forward with maybe another recommendation for fiscal year 2020. Um, but I think we've just gotten to that point where it's time to kind of revisit it. We've had conversations about this with the administrative team. Um, and, you know, we feel where it's just it's that time to um, propose a, you know, a sort of small increase to, to the full school child care rates. Not that it's bad to be the lowest, but we, we are so low, I don't understand I how we can even afford to run this program. It's getting challenged. I mean, it's a, we're not even close to How long is the, the preschool? What's the time frame? Uh, it's mainly an hour. Does it vary between the late start and the early start school? Yeah. I think, the, yes, the late start school is about an hour and 15 minutes. With the fourth school is about an hour. Yeah, yeah. so we're just schools. about 15 minutes. Later. Yeah. That's about the right now. Starts at 7.30, so whenever the bell rings. So yeah, so like an hour, 20 minutes, an hour. So 7.30, 20 minutes, it's going to be 8.55. Yeah, but they'll be yeah. on the building at 8.55. Right, so it'll be a variation. Yeah. I, 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 I hate raising, increasing rates yeah, or anything, like but this is that. going, so if your child does five days a week, we're going from $77 to $85 a month. Correct. We're going up 40 cents a day, basically. Yeah, it's not. 385 a day to 425, 40 yeah. cents a day. Just the going rate right for daycare is about $15. I'm going to say, this to me is. Some I mean, we could go higher. I don't we're understand trying. how we're avoiding it. Let's not. It. No. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to. Yeah. We, we discussed yeah. this quite a bit, Michael and I, about what was a need. Like, we thought you know, we'd like to go higher, obviously, for the for obvious reason, but we thought you know, it was a reasonable, reasonable misfactor here, too. Yeah. But, you know, not hitting people too hard all at once. I'm sensitive though because the, um, the dreaded free full day K question has raised its head again over the past week and there's obviously a lot of discussion, a lot of interest in it and we have a very high uh, tuition rate for our full day K. So that makes me a little sensitive. Even though they're not related, it's just, uh, but, but this is, this is probably, I would, I would bet if we look, this might be one of the lowest I think rates in the state. Yeah. If, we do the, if we do the increases, they're going to cut the budget down. <laughs> um, not going to raise that much. Not at these figures. Not at 40 cents. I, mean, I think what you're going to do is you're going to accomplish two things. You're going to ensure that we're covering our costs so there's not a situation where we're running a revolving account into the, the negative of the new way as we approach the end of the fiscal year. That would have an impact on, on the general fund budget. I think. And I think even though it's a small increase, 
based on our projections and some of the information we've looked at, we feel we could hold the rates at least the same for two years, two more years, before we might have to look at it again. Yeah, it's still a pretty good deal for parents, though, to be able to drop the kids off an hour and hour. It is early. It really is. Right? And now we know, especially if you have the late school stop, that's even right. better for all of them. Yeah. Right. In terms of the after school, we don't get involved in that at all. That's strictly the wise. Strictly the wise, yeah. And we contract with the So they, they charge the parents directly. Right. We they rent our, they're basically renting our facility. Okay. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the new rate schedule for preschool care. Pre before school. school care at our elementary schools. And I do want, I just want to read the new rates so everybody's aware. For those who attend Five days per week, it's $85 per month, going up from 77. Four days, it's 72 per month, going up from 65. Three days, it's 57 a month, up from 48. Two days, is $40 a month, up from 32. And those using one day a month is, uh, one day a week is $20 a month, up from 16. Second. Any further discussion? Just a comment. There's so much flexibility with the before school program that if you need an additional day, it's so reasonably priced that people can very easily take advantage of extra days. And I think that's another bonus to keeping the low, the low rates as low as they are, is that it, it allows for more flexibility for parents. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item on our agenda is the academic calendar for 2017-18. So Mr. Chairman, in your packet is a draft um, of the 2017-18 academic calendar. Um, believe it or not, I can't even tell you the, the questions that come into our office about when is graduation next year, when is February vacation next year, so we're going to get these questions very, very early on in the school year, so as soon as we get the calendar out for folks, I think that the easier it makes um, their lives for, for whatever planning purposes they might need. So the calendar that's um, in your packet <clears throat> is not anything, um, there's nothing out of the ordinary in it. I think we've advanced um, the calendar accordingly, it has the same number of professional development days, um, either half days or a full day. Um, we have the traditional start um, set for the Wednesday, for students for the Wednesday after um, Labor Day. Um, so that would be September the 6th of 2017. Um, so I don't think that there's anything um, particularly unusual um, to note. You, you, the one thing I would just call attention to maybe is in November we are we had a very successful um, Northeast Professional Educators Network and Penn Day where we take advantage of Election Day for those districts that don't have school because they use their schools as polling places. We don't happen to be one of those, but we get to network with about two dozen other communities to offer professional development across the region. And it's worked very well now for two years. We'd like to continue that again with um, 2017. So, uh, but beyond that, I don't have any other comments, but I certainly answer any questions. Before we vote, just curious, um, knock on um, artificial material here. Um, what date will we get out this year if there are no snow days? Do you know what the last day will be this year? Um, Sorry to catch up. I'm going to say the 23rd was the date without the five. Okay. Um, but please don't quote me on that. I can tell you in a second. Because <clears throat> it looks like next year, if the 25th is the last day with no snow days, it will be the 18th. Took the five days off. So, oh no, it will be the. Uh, 15th. This year, this year it is, uh, let's see, if we back out, one, two, three, four, five, it would be the 20th. 20th? Okay. Right. All right. Right. The 26th is a Monday. We back out one, two, three, four, five, 20. So not, you sorry, the 19th, yes, Monday, June 19th would be the day. So next year would be Monday, June 18th. Okay. Correct. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the 2017-18 preliminary school calendar. Is it preliminary or? Uh, if you vote on this tonight, this will be uh, published tomorrow. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve this, this school calendar for school year 2017-2018. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay.
have no minutes. Budget update, Mr. Pitcock. Great, thank you. Um, this evening, the January budget update was included in the packet. This uh, report summarizes financial activity through the month of December. And I would say there's not a lot of new information here that we wouldn't even discuss and present. Um, last month, um, things seem to be trending kind of the same and some of the same uh, drivers of what's happening with our you know, fiscal 2016 budget as we kind of enter the next quarter is, is, is staying relatively the same. Uh, we have a little bit of money and some flexibility in the special education out of district tuition budget. Again, that's because we exceeded the amount we had budgeted to prepay at the end of fiscal 16, so that provides a little bit of flexibility right now. We're still watching um, you know, any changes and needs for the students that may uh, arise closely. Um, we talk about utilities and expenses each month, and I think those right now seem to be in line with what we projected. Um, you know, I do anticipate that uh, the electricity budget is, you know, I think that's going to be pretty, pretty close to what we, our expenses will be pretty close to what we budgeted. Right now, we are projecting there may be a savings in the gas budget, but again, if we're early in that, that heating season still with some, you know, several weeks and months to go, so we'll have to watch that closely. Um, we talked a little bit uh, earlier about Wayne. Um, during Wayne's presentation in the past about the energy management contract, the Ivy Logic, we have seen some benefits there. Um, those monthly visits certainly are going well. We've talked about the challenges and the additional some costs that have arisen this year that um, somewhat kind of unanticipated that we are working hard to address, and those around HVAC related issues, there's been some plumbing related issues uh, throughout the district. But particularly around the HVAC, um, trying to get a handle on the, the new campus and what the needs are. And as Wayne alluded to earlier, and as we discussed, we are certainly have learned a lot over the last two and a half years. And I think we are getting close to um, getting in a better place to, to understand what, what we need in terms of preventative maintenance and regularly you know, quarterly visits and schedules of, of filters and belts and all the equipment that. Uh, comes with that campus in the building. I think we uh, getting. I think Wayne made a good point where he mentioned it's about knowing who to call and knowing who to contact. And I think we're getting uh, the right people and then closer to getting the right people that know what we're doing on, on our particular equipment um, here to address to address issues as, and as well as be more proactive. I think that's fair to say. But there is a cost to it. I and mean, right now we're trying to manage that cost by shifting some things around within Wayne's budget. We've been able to do that. Um, it's still several months to go, so we have to pay attention to it closely. And you know, certainly, I think these things will have an impact on fiscal 18 and the use of the year, uh, fiscal 18 budget in the future. Um, the food service program, we certainly closed out the month of December, unfortunately, with a net loss. Um, and, you know, December typically is a challenging month for the program, it being you know, with the vacation week and, and so forth. So. Uh, we, you know, we, though we didn't like to see that loss, um, the middle sold each day when we, we do analyze that, that information uh, was slightly up from, from a year ago. Um, the elementary levels are trending about the same, and the middle school and high school continue to be up compared to last year. So despite the loss in December, some of that was, was part of our forecast, our net loss year to date through the month of December is a lot less than where we were a year ago. I know it's about fourteen thousand dollars you can see in the report, which I would say is an encouraging sign. So uh, our projections that we would lose less than eighteen thousand for the year, we're at ten. But we had a very good, you know, typically the months that we do well is January, um, March, May, the longer month with high operating days. So we'll we'll hope to have good months there and hopefully you know minimize this loss and continue the goal is continue uh, we'll continue to do a great year. Um, on the payroll side of, the, of things, not much has changed. Most of our projections are certainly, our expenses and projections are certainly in line with budgeted ranges. Um, I've mentioned it, and certainly you recall in fiscal, in the development of fiscal 17, there's a little bit of less money in some of the, the teachers and paraprofessionals and some of the lines because of the, the higher and more aggressiveness in our attrition uh, turnover savings that we uh, included in the fiscal 17 budget, so we're seeing those kind of less projected savings than we have seen in the past. Um, 
we have experienced the trend of needing to appoint long-term substitutes for a variety of reasons uh, kind of go down a little bit this year. I mean, that could change quickly, but we are seeing a, a, you know, a surplus in the, the substitute budget projections at this point in time. And everything else seems to be very close to budget, budget changes. So at that point, I'll, with that said, I'll turn over any questions on the uh, general report. Questions? It looks to me like we're awfully, awfully tight. So. Yeah, we're tight. We're, we're a lot tighter than where we've been. And I think we anticipated that a little bit. Almost and, scary tight. And we're seeing that. So, you know, uh, yeah, we're, we're tight. So we need to be certainly very diligent going forward. Uh, staffing, not this time. There's been some donations. Oh, yeah. I have some already though for the next meeting. Oh, some that came in late on Friday. I was beginning to think about that whole thing. There are already two, two sizes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. two, two significant. Just special cut off. Subcommittee update. Secondary <laughs> School Building Committee met on January 10th. Uh, and there's still, uh, there's still a punch list. Um, those items being worked on, as far as I know, uh, we're still dealing with the uh, uh, drainage issue, which they're going to be back in here during April vacation. Don't want to finish it then, but unlikely. Um, oh, I was going to ask why they wouldn't come back in April. They, they're going to be here in April vacation, but oh. it's, it's unlikely they're going to be able to finish it oh, in just, right. just right. a week. Right. Um, still dealing with them, negotiating with them, and trying to figure out how we're going to repave the roads, but that's going to be done. Um, just going to figure out to what extent it's going to be done. I think we're going to look at trying to pave entire stretches of the roads where there's cuts that will be made within a certain distance of each other. HVAC, uh, still um, dealing with some issues with the HVAC, John? Yeah, we are, but I think progress is being made. And we're still waiting on some training on some of the uh, <coughs> audio-visual equipment as well. We are. Right? Yeah. We want to get that concluded. Uh, and the landscaping, that has to wait till the spring. There's a number of shrubs, a number of plantings <coughs> that have to be replaced. Uh, probably some lawn work to do as well. Uh, but that's not going to happen until April. So. I don't know what else you had. It was largely an executive session. Yeah, it was, it was not the executive session. Right. The, the punch list is monetized. We have uh, basically what we have is almost agreement on, I guess we have agreement on the scope that's left to be done. Uh, we are still talking about the price. Of well, we have a monetized punch list and we have retainage that exceeds $2 million so that, you know, we're, we're Good shape as far as having whatever's outstanding, not paying part until it's finished. Mm -hmm. Actually, price and schedule. Yeah. They gave you a schedule? A written? No. Okay. No, but there needs to be an end point. And although an end point is not a schedule, it is one of the features of a schedule. And yes. we it need to have that feature built into any. Uh, completion agreement uh, or finalizing agreement that we have. Uh, I'd just say the Secondary School Building Committee and the administration have done a good job of holding their feet to the fire to get everything done. So. I guess if I could, Mr. Bowers, just two, two quick things up related to the building project. Actually, Mr. Vance, you mentioned about the training with Patrick Daly and I meet with a representative, actually, I think the president of the company, Hawkers, and he's somewhere else. Yes at their request. Um, so that, that could be an interesting meeting. I think they want to try to um, get the essentially, factory. I think, yeah, I think they want to try to right some wrongs with some things Good. that we might be dissatisfied so with. That, that, that could be a stage of meeting. We also, and this is largely through Michael's efforts, have, um, we feel that they're, we're still lighting interior parts of the building more than we need to. But it's, there's not a lot of light switches, as you all know. Uh, it's a programming issue. So we have something scheduled for the 30th? Uh, yes, 30th of January. A technician to come out and help Wayne with that. That's for efficiency uh, cost savings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think we're, I still perfect. think we're lighting too much of the building inside. We'd like to try to zone some things out so that we're not 
the stereo. Keep, keeping like that. Oh, oh, I, I just don't know. That's, well, that's a different issue. But in mean, Main Street, it might be one of the, I mean, there's so much I think, we could, I think we could, you know, section, you know, if we can, I, yes. I don't know to what degree you can isolate, but we're going to find that out. Right. Um, so it's, it's yeah. just it's something we're looking at, again, for both an efficiency and a cost uh, savings potentially. Athletic Facilities Committee met on January 12th. Just quickly, um, more plans presented for the um, bathroom slash potential um, <coughs> concession stand at Arthur Kennedy Field. Um, another meeting on the 31st. There has been a, a placeholder for a warrant item uh, for the special town meeting, which will take place in March. Um, and hopefully on the 31st, January 31st, uh, we really need to vote on a plan to recommend a selectman because if we don't, we're not going to really be able to get them the information in time for the special town meeting. They have to review it in order for them to make a recommendation. So we really need to, um, I will say there hasn't been a lot of satisfaction with the plans that have been presented, and there hasn't been much agreement at all on the plans presented. So it's going to be a challenge to get this done for this year. I will tell you this. If it has to be pushed out for whatever reason, I know that the superintendent is 100% in line with this. We will push to have the porta potties in a different location. They cannot be where they were last year, or they still are, which is next to the concession stand, which they were horrendous during football season. I know Cliff would confirm well, that. The Jerry concession stand, the food does go right through. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but they just were, the ticket, the, one of the ticket takers tables, the ticket tables was right there outside the, um, outside of port bodies. It was not a good location. But our goal is to still get the Yes, our goal is still get the Absolutely. If, if we have to wait until June's on what is the estimated construction? Well, that's the problem. That that's, that's seems to problem. be an issue. They're saying that we could potentially, based on getting the bits out and everything else, lose the whole season into right. the following spring. Right. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, because, they would, that, because based on getting the bids out and stuff, yeah. we'd be starting construction right now yeah. with football season. Yeah. Right. So we wouldn't be able to do that. We'd we'd that most right. Plus, you've got to have the availability of the contract. We, we have to continue to show that we're making progress toward a plan in order to satisfy the waiver that we have. Yeah, right. We have to deal with our town health inspector um, and our town building inspector. As long as they're satisfied that we're moving in the right direction, we won't have any sense. But sooner or later, we have to right. get Sooner or later, we have to get done. And the cost isn't going to get out. Right, the cost isn't going to get out. Correct. Correct. The cost never go down. No. Subcommittee schedule mm -hmm. meeting dates. Uh, NORCAM board of directors, January 26th at 7 in NORCAM office, finance planning team on the 27th at 8.15 a.m. in the superintendent's office, SSPC meeting, January 31st. 30 in the district learning lab, athletic facilities committee the 31st at 6.30 in the district learning lab, athletic subcommittee February 7th at 12.30 in the afternoon, superintendent's office and evaluation subcommittee February 13th at 3 in the superintendent's office. Administrator three four. Chairman, I have nothing additional to share this year. This is February 6th, 6.30, regular meeting, middle school presentation. That's in the distance learning lab. And February 27th at 6.30, regular meeting. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.